Many rivers and their floodplains have been drastically changed as dams are common fixtures and levees often line the banks of our rivers. Many of these dams were built primarily to reduce flood risk and when combined with downstream levees, they protect communities from many floods, as is seen here. Reservoirs behind dams operated to reduce flood risk are kept relatively empty, so they have room to store floodwaters. This approach, however, makes them more susceptible during droughts. But if some of the flood storage capacity in the reservoir is taken away, if more water is stored behind the dam in order to provide more water supply, increased hydroelectric power or prolonged recreational opportunities, the risk of downstream flooding increases, as is seen in this scenario, which represents a major flooding event. But what if we could find a better balance, one that allows us to keep reservoirs fuller while still maintaining or even improving flood protection for communities. This is the goal of integrated reservoir and floodplain management, which offers an approach to protect downstream communities while creating or enhancing other benefits from our dams. The key is this. In many cases, more water in the reservoirs equals more money, money generated from things like increased hydropower and water supply for communities, agriculture, and industry. These and other sources of revenue can, in turn, be used downstream to help cover the costs of protecting communities from floods and enabling more floodplain areas to store or convey water. But how do we better prepare downstream areas to accept floodwaters without damage? There are a number of proven options depending on the needs of the local community. For urban areas, strengthening or raising the height of levees may be appropriate, but areas not protected by the levees can still be used. For example, some cities have built riverfront parks that can tolerate occasional flooding. In less developed areas, floodproofing individual structures may be most cost-effective. In agricultural areas, flooding in non-crop seasons may be acceptable, and there may be opportunities to work with willing landowners to secure flood easements, where farmers are paid to allow their fields to flood during storms or to shift to flood-tolerant crops. At times, people in the most flood-prone areas may desire to sell and move their homes or farmland, and in some situations, old and weak levees can be replaced and set farther back from the river, which not only creates more flood storage, but also results in less maintenance cost over time compared to levees adjacent to rivers. Some communities utilize flood bypass channels or flood retention areas where floodgates are installed on levees to allow for the controlled inundation of undeveloped or less developed land during severe floods. Depending on the land use in these areas, insurance or finance mechanisms can be established to compensate willing landowners who are affected. Floodplains that are in their natural state, like marshes and forests, benefit society by helping store and convey flood water. So restoring some of these areas is an effective way to reduce flood damages and produce other benefits like improved water quality, the recharging of groundwater, enhanced recreational activities, and better wildlife habitat. Water is too valuable not to make the most of it. Keeping a large portion of a reservoir empty to wait for a flood may not be the best way to maximize this precious resource, when the reservoir could be kept fuller and provide more reliable water supply and clean hydropower. By modernizing the operations of our dams and coordinating the management of downstream floodplains, we can get the most out of our water. This is a solution that can be measured in dollars and cents, in the security of our communities, and in the health of our environment.